Have you ever wanted to be perfect? Get the perfect grades, be the best on the team, appear perfect? Hi, I am Maya Abiyankar and I am here today to talk to you about perfection and how much energy we waste thinking about the way we appear to the world around us. In my experience, there is a very fine line between wanting to be good at something and having a compulsive need to be perfect. I find myself crossing the line a lot, and maybe you do too. Sometimes, my desire to appear perfect has taken over my mind and been the primary motivation for my decisions. Over time, I have realized that it's impossible to be perfect, so I set a more reasonable goal for myself to appear perfect. It all started in fourth grade. I was paying too much attention on the social dynamics between some friends, instead of paying attention in class and on my schoolwork. My parents told me that in my parent-teacher conferences, my teacher reported that I needed to work harder. Instead of worrying about my learning, I focused on how it hurt my image as a good student. Over time, these thoughts led me to always wanting to look perfect in everyone else's eyes. I became so focused on how others saw me that I didn't take into account how I saw myself in my own eyes. At times, when I was alone and no one was looking at me, I felt rather empty because everything about my life was focused on seeming perfect, not on being my true self. Because of my wanting to appear perfect, I have missed out on several things and skipped important steps that would have helped me to grow. I didn't want to try new things because if I didn't do well, then why bother? Or at least that is what I thought because I didn't want to ruin the image of myself that I presented as my perfect self who does everything right. For example, when I had the opportunity to try a different sport, I decided I shouldn't because what if I wasn't good at it? Another time it got in my way was with my art. I have been passionate about art and have regularly painted and sketched as a hobby since I was little. My parents suggested that I should make a portfolio in order to share my work with the people around me. My mom would ask me about the portfolio, but I shut it down every time. I did this because I felt if I shared that part of myself that I had kept private from the world, people wouldn't like it and it would affect my image. I decided I didn't want to share that part of myself so there wasn't the slightest possibility for it to get rejected by others. But then, with the help of my parents, I realized that art, the art that I do is a big part of me, a part that I should show to the world, a part of me that I shouldn't hide away in fear of rejection. Another thing that has come of my impossible goal is that I began to pick and choose which people I wanted to appear perfect to, and the other people were left with the rest of me which, to be honest, is not always pleasant. I tried so hard to always be perfect to the outside world that I had nothing left over for my family. They were the ones who saw the best and the worst versions of the real me. As time went on, this unrealistic pressure started to become hard to keep up with. I found myself acting at times rude to other people and losing my temper more often. I now realize this wasn't fair to them or myself, and all this effort to seem perfect was actually really hurting me. The attempt to appear perfect made me feel like I was being fake all the time in the world. At home, I could be my whole self. My parents helped me realize that the person I was showing to the outside world is not the real me. Now that I've realized that, I have been working on trying to be as real as I can be with everyone. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying appearances don't matter. We all want to look good and do well on teams and in school. What I am talking about is how much we want it and what we sacrifice for the sake of appearances. When we want to look perfect, we can't show our flaws and we can't never be real, which leaves us feeling lonely. Perfection is an interesting concept. The word itself means the condition or state of being free from all flaws or defects. This definition does not match up with the, what a human fundamentally is. Let's be real. We all have flaws and we all make mistakes, and that's inevitable. 
But with this type of perfectionist mindset that I'm talking about, these flaws are something to be ashamed of and to hide. For example, when I started middle school in fifth grade, I became very focused on my grades. I started to think less about what I was learning and rather caring more about what grade I would earn. I approached my assignments to get the A, not with curiosity. I also didn't pursue other activities because that would take time away from studying to get those grades. In this situation, I let my perfectionist mind take over. My parents helped me to get over my perfectionism. This year, I decided to participate in other activities like the play. I know I'm an amazing singer, which all of you know as well after High School Musical. <laughs> but I decided to go for it anyway, and I had a lot of fun. I put aside my wanting to be perfect and tried something new, which I'm so happy to have done. I had lots of fun with my peers and great memories that I will always have. Memories that I would have missed out on if I didn't put, my, put aside my wanting to appear perfect. In the scripture that Max read for us, Paul reminds us that only God is perfect. If we try to be perfect, we are unconsciously trying to be like God. But God made us human, and by nature, humans make mistakes and have flaws. They make us unique and interesting. Wanting to seem perfect is not only unrealistic, but on the surface, it's selfish and lacking humility. More deeply, the truth lies in our fear of not being good enough. To a perfectionist, admitting our mistakes, weaknesses, and asking for help only makes us feel worse about ourselves. But if we listen to Paul and remember that only God is perfect, we can reveal our flaws, be honest about our limitations, and be real with the people we care about. That is the only path to grow, learn, and have truly meaningful relationships. In conclusion, trying to be perfect is impossible. Really, we should be striving to be our true best selves, not our perfect selves. I have learned the only way to conquer this feeling is to embrace our flaws, the ones that some of us may hide away. For example, I'm not a great singer, like I said before, and I'm not very good at certain sports. We should look at this version of ourselves and learn to love it as we love everyone else, with acceptance and compassion because our flaws are part of us and a part that makes us who we are. So don't hide them, show them to the world. Don't be perfect, because really perfect is a boring and silly thing to desire. You are all amazing people inside and out, so don't hide those flaws, show them to the world. Love yourself, your whole self. I'm excited to go into my new high school experience with these new perspectives, so I encourage you, don't try to be perfect. Show your true self to the world, flaws and all. Thank you.